had to choose who you feel like were the handful of top receivers in today's game, no particular order, yeah. who would you say? I, you know, I'm going to give you my number one. My oh. number one mm. is uh, uh, Julio Jones. Really? Julio Jones has everything. Well, Julio Jones is the best wide receiver in the NFL. If I'm starting a team and you tell me I can pick one wide receiver, that's who I'm picking. From growing up in an extremely violent neighborhood to growing into one of the top five greatest wide receivers the game has ever seen. With speed we had never seen in a 6'3 frame. Fans were in awe of the future first ballot Hall of Famer and fans were completely confused when he was traded. But just how good was Julio Jones actually? Born and raised by a single mother as Quintorius Lopez Julio Jones in Foley, Alabama. He grew up in a violent neighborhood where his mother, Queen Marvin, worked hard to keep him out of trouble and push him to do well. She was just working a lot and things like that. And, you know, I occasionally sneak out and play football and stuff. <laughs> and I knew I was pretty good. You know, I was making the older guys miss and um, pretty tough just playing in the streets. We play, throw them up, bust them up, you know, smith a quitter, things like that. Jones is very close to his brother, Philip, who lost his arm after sustaining a gunshot wound in 2014. Throughout his childhood, Jones showed a natural talent for football, and his mother recognized his potential early on. She did all she could to support him, providing him with the resources he needed to pursue his passion for the sport. I was like 12, 13 years old, I was 5'5". Five, five. So I always played running back, um, Pop Warner, played running back. Middle school, seventh, eighth grade, I played running back. And my freshman year of high school, I played running back. Julio Jones was stealing headlines well before his record-breaking career with the Atlanta Falcons. Jones was a key contributor to the football, basketball, and track and field teams. Dunk on one of my teammates. <laughs> by far the craziest dunk I've ever seen. And it was a, it was a tip dunk. Ooh. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was those would be nasty, them Blake Griffin type oh, it was. Yeah, it was sick. <laughs> I'm going to say it, it took like, it took about 15, 20 minutes to get the game started. Back. Damn, it was like that. They rushed the floor. It was crazy. I mean, just looking at some of his high school highlights, he was an impressive athlete from the get-go, foreshadowing a professional career that could send him to the Hall of Fame. All the tools that helped him with the Falcons were there to see from an early age. As a high schooler, Jones was a state champion at long jump, triple jump, and the high jump, also competing as a sprinter. For his efforts in athletics, he was named the Gatorade Athlete of the Year for Alabama in 2006 and 2007, in addition to being recognized as the Mr. Alabama track and field athlete in 2007. His physical proudness unsurprisingly translated to the football field nicely, helping him earn the name of Waffle House. Noah, why don't we use your why'd you call it Waffle House? Call him always open. Ooh, nice. As a junior, Jones had 75 receptions for 1,306 yards and 16 touchdowns, which was good enough to get him on the Under Armour All-American team and make him a five-star recruit. He was the number one wide receiver in his class, meaning all the universities wanted him on their teams. But Jones knew he wanted to stay close to home. I make my decision by where I feel the most comfortable and where I feel like home at. So I'm gonna be going to the University of Alabama. <laughs> Jones became the first true freshman receiver to ever start for Alabama, catching four balls for 28 yards and a touchdown. One of the things Coach Saban told me, really, I think that got me to Alabama, we'll win with you or without you. And I think he sold me on that because I knew then I had to come in and work. I didn't want nobody to get nothing to me. You know, I wanted to come in and work for it. As a freshman, he went on to post 847 yards and four touchdowns as Alabama improved to a 12-2 record. Jones was the SEC Freshman of the Year with scouts taking note of his incredible combination of size, speed, and athleticism. Jones's best year, though, came as a junior, logging over 1,000 yards and seven touchdowns earning him first team all SEC recognition. The season was capped off with an impressive bowl win over Michigan State in which Jones contributed as a receiver and a rusher. He totaled 85 yards on the day, including a rushing score, which showed that he could do it all. Jones decided not to return to Alabama for his senior year, instead turning his attention to the NFL. He left Alabama with the second most receiving yards in school history, the single season record, and the fourth most receiving touchdowns. As a rare physical 
specimen, it came as no surprise that Jones put on a show at the NFL Combine. And the craziest part is Jones had a broken bone in his foot, but was still able to post the longest long jump in the third fastest 40 yard dash among the wide receivers. And to no surprise, he was selected within the top 10 picks of that year's draft. With the sixth pick in the 2011 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Julio Jones, wide receiver, Alabama. Jones was the earliest wide receiver taken in franchise history, and the Falcons had to trade five draft picks to the Browns to make it happen. The year before, the Falcons were coming off of a 13-3 season where they lost in the divisional round of the playoffs. Julio Jones was the missing piece they felt they needed to take them to the next level. And once he was in the league, it didn't take long for Julio to show that he could handle himself in the professional arena. Him and Matt Ryan had some incredible chemistry from the get-go, posting a solid debut performance that featured five catches for 71 yards. He then took an early leap into the Superstar Club with a dominant week four display against Seattle. The rookie received a whopping 17 targets, collecting 11 of them for 127 yards. It took only four games for him to become a player that the Falcons could depend on. Unfortunately though, an injury sustained one week later would knock him out for a few weeks. But once he returned to the field, it seemed like he didn't miss a beat, producing a season high 131 yards and two touchdowns on just three catches against the Indianapolis Colts. Jones finished his rookie year with 959 yards and eight touchdowns despite missing three games due to injury. He was named to the all-rookie team before getting his first taste of playoff action. But things didn't go as planned and the Falcons were defeated by the eventual Super Bowl champion New York Giants. Jones capitalized on a strong rookie season by elevating his game further as a sophomore in the league. He caught 79 passes for 1,198 yards and 10 touchdowns, helping Atlanta to a 13-3 record and earning himself his first Pro Bowl award. I mean, Jones's impact on the team could not be understated, and he almost managed to single-handedly secure the Falcons a Super Bowl appearance with an incredible game against the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship. Jones caught 11 of his 13 targets, resulting in 182 yards and two touchdowns. The Falcons did struggle to run the ball that game, relying heavily on Julio to move the ball. But despite his dominant performance, the Falcons fell just short and had to watch the Super Bowl from home. By now though, Julio was the focal point of the offense and a superstar in the NFL. The 2013 season brought immense frustration though, as what looked to be a record-breaking year was cut short by injury after just five weeks. A broken foot meant that Julio wouldn't return to the field that season, but his 580 yards and two scores in just five games showed what a force he had become. What followed though, nobody could have predicted. He had five consecutive seasons with over 1,400 receiving yards, propelling Julio Jones up the ranks as one of the greatest wide receivers to ever play the game. I would always Julio's dominance. A 1,593 yard season in 2014 and an 1,800 yard season in 2015 coincided with two disappointing years from the Falcons. I mean, in both of those years, they didn't even have a winning record. Jones was putting up insane numbers, but too often, they came in losing efforts. I mean, hell, in 2014, Jones went over 100 yards seven times, with the best performance coming late in the season. A December clash with the Green Bay Packers saw Jones convert 11 catches into an incredible 259 yards and a touchdown. It was another example of Jones putting the team on his back, but ultimately not getting the help he needed to secure the win. And although his 1,500 yards couldn't help the team achieve a winning record, it did solidify his status as the future of the team. He was rewarded with a shiny new contract, which was a five-year, $71 million extension. And the payday must have helped because Julio quickly got to work, racking up 440 yards across the first three games of 2015. The Falcons quickly stretched to a 5-0 record, but a late season slump would deny the Falcons a playoff appearance. Despite the team's disappointing losses, Julio was proving to be unstoppable. He posted nine games over 100 yards in 2015, finishing up with a league-leading 1,871 yards and eight touchdowns. Thankfully though, 2016 brought success to the Falcons, led by Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. The Falcons posted an 11-5 record, winning the NFL 
NFC South for the first time in four years. The 2016 season was not only special because of the Falcons playoff run, but also because it featured one of the most incredible individual performances ever seen in the NFL. A week four game against the Panthers will go down in history as one of only six times that a wide receiver has posted 300 yards in a single game. Julio Jones' 12 catch, 300 yards, and one touchdown performance against the Panthers was a sight to behold. I mean, as a kid, I was sitting there with my jaw on the floor, and it came against a bitter rival in the Panthers too. Jones already had a reputation in the NFL for being unguardable, and his game-wrecking ability was on show again in the NFC Championship game that year. His 180-yard, two-touchdown performance against Seattle sent the Falcons to the Super Bowl for the first time since 1998. Unfortunately, what could have been the greatest day of Falcons fans' lives turned to infamy after the team choked up a 28-3 lead. The devastating loss was one of the most brutal in sports history and is still joked about to this day. And although he was held to just four catches in the Super Bowl, he did produce a remarkable athletic sideline catch that, I mean, it looked like it was going to secure the win for Atlanta. The loss was heartbreaking, but it was a another year of individual brilliance on Jones's part. His 1,409 yards marked his third consecutive year over 1,400 yards, and he was a big reason why Matt Ryan won the MVP award that year. Jones himself was selected as a first-team All-Pro player for the second year running, and after years of failing to reach the playoffs, losing in that fashion was going to be hard to bounce back from. Jones was known for his athletic prowess, but his toughness and resilience is an underrated aspect of his game. He rebounded from the Super Bowl heartbreak to post another 1,400-yard season in 2017, going even better in 2018 by registering a 1,600-yard season, which led the NFL. Jones led the Falcons in receiving in six consecutive seasons, posting at least 1,394 yards in every season between 2014 and 2019. And even looking back to his rookie season, Julio Jones's impressive resume included two first-team All-Pro Bowl selections three second team all pro selections, seven pro bowls, in two years as the NFL's leading wide receiver. It will easily go down as one of the greatest stretches by a wide receiver in NFL history, surely solidifying his status as a top five wide receiver of all time. And Jones's final season with Atlanta started the same as many would have expected as he caught nine of 12 targets for 157 yards. Week four of that season was bittersweet for Julio though. His four catches for 32 yards meant that he broke Rodney White's all-time career career reception records for the Falcons. But in that game, he would also sustain a hamstring injury that would hamper him through the rest of the year. He played in only nine games in 2020, meaning his impressive 1,000 yard streak was over. And so was his career as a Falcon. And at this point, injuries were becoming a common thing for Julio Jones at this point, greatly restricting his ability to make an impact as a Tennessee Titan in 2021 and as a Tampa Bay Buccaneer in 2022. 20 games across these two seasons resulted in just 733 three yards and only three touchdowns. He started 2023 without a team before signing with the Philadelphia Eagles this year. As one of the powerhouses in the NFC, Jones will be hoping to play his part in a Super Bowl winning effort. There is no doubt that prime Julio Jones was one of the most feared offensive players in the NFL. He was truly unstoppable for years and can proudly say that he is one of only six players to have over 300 receiving yards in a game. His 12,896 yards and 848 receptions both still stand as all-time records for the Falcons. Many will argue that he is the greatest Atlanta Falcon of all time, and many will push for him to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. But what do you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below, and I will catch you guys in the next one.